think we can start. So first of all, good evening everybody, thank you for being here. Uh, let me introduce the fact that we have the QR code. If you uh, are new, if you are just like uh, enrolled in the PhD, welcome also to our program. So with this uh, PhD coax, uh, it's of course an idea to share our presentation, to share our research. And uh, today it's the turn of the Dean. Again, this is a QR code to register to the event because uh, after all the events we have a prize. So, of course, this is a competition as well. And we need to register your presence so that if you attended most of the PhD talks, it's about 75-80% of the talks, then you, are also, um, you can also vote for like, uh, the prize. So you can also choose uh, which candidate you like the most. Uh, otherwise, of course, this is not possible. And uh, so please register. We also have a paper here, so if maybe you also need it. We have it. And uh, so, um, Dean is a PhD candidate of the 36th cycle. He works with Professor Ferrara, and uh, um, he's enrolled in the PhD in uh, structural seismic and geotechnical engineering. In particular, he's working in the structural sector. He's a civil engineer, and today he's presenting his work uh, on uh, ultra and high performance concrete. So, Dean. Yeah, thanks for your introduction. <laughs> Uh, my name is Bin C. I'm a PhD student of for 36 Cypher in uh, DICA. My supervisor, Prof. Liberal Ferrara, and uh, today we will present uh, my, well, actually, it's one of my PhD thesis chapter. The name is Healing Capacity of Ultra High Performance Concrete, Performance Concrete and Sustained Through uh, Correct Intense Sensations and Aggressive Environments. Okay, I will introduce this presentation following uh, there's aspects, introduction, experiment plan, and self healing property test, and the result. The final uh, section is conclusions. As, as all you know, concrete <laughs> is a widely used material in the world and ex exclude water. And uh, But now we found the concrete structure is suffering and lots of issues, especially the durability problem. And actually, the, uh, the main problem because the durability is cracking. And especially when concrete cr crack, and uh, you know, some concrete structure uh, serves in very harsh environments like seawater, like sea, and the seawater contains a lot of uh, aggressive ions, like fluid ions, soft ions. When there's aggressive ions enter the inside of concrete and probably make the corrosion reaction from this, um, of the steel bar and make the degradation of concrete property. So, and, but creek is inevitable and the creek can come from different sources like uh, overloading, uh, temperature, create shrinkage, fire, alkaline aggregate reaction, and so on. So, how to, why creek? Because concrete is brittle material and the creek is inevitable. Uh, thanks to the cementitious materials de development, and uh, we have very advanced and innovative uh, uh, cementitious material, especially for high performance, ultra high performance concrete uh, UHPC. Uh, it uh, already has been used in a lot of real structures, like uh, bridge structures and uh, piers. And it was designed by densified uh, particle packaging theater. So it uh, can consists with of uh, very fine aggregates and uh, some very fine active particles. And also, in order to in, uh, increase the tensile capacity, uh, some steel fiber was added. In um, so you can, you can see the uh, mechanic property, the compressive strength. Then the norm, then the uh, conventional concrete is higher, and even for tensile, uh, tensile strength is higher than the conventional concrete, and it also has a very interesting uh, strength hardening during the tensile uh, strength, and because of the fiber branching uh, effect from the uh, fibers. Okay, so and also. You can see this durability. Uh, UHPC has 
a lower chlorate chlorate diffusion coefficient in the high uh, in the high performance concrete and the normal concrete. So because of its very denser structure, so it can achieve higher compressive strength and also has strength hardening and higher durability than normal concrete. But as we know, correct is nimble, even for UHPC, because we use very fine aggregate and also use a lot of usage of uh, the cement. So this, this cementation, as the water cementation ratio is very low. So some, some research found that the low uh, water cementation ratio will cause very huge uh, uh, shrinkage. So shrinkage will cause uh, cracking. So how to avoid uh, and how to uh, clean up a country uh, cracking property uh, thanks to development of several healing pro, uh, technology. The uh, actually concrete can help itself um, by different actions. As you can see in the picture, uh, it has three actions, uh, physical actions, chemical actions, and mechanical actions. The concrete clay can be held back through these actions. And uh, also, there also we use, uh, they have two kinds of self-healing mechanisms. One is autogenous self-healing mechanisms. Another one is autonomous self-healing mechanisms. For autonomous self-healing mechanisms, a researcher use some uh, additives like capsule with some um, glues or bacteria. When uh, when concrete cracking happening, and this we are uh, checking this mechanism of autogenic self autonomous self healing and make the, this capsule uh, break and release some glue and block this cracks. And also autonomous, another one is autonomous, autogenous self healing is people use some very powdered, very active particles and powder and when concrete creating water can enter the concrete inside and react with this active powder and to cre uh, create, generate some uh, sentiment uh, to block this creek. So after self-healing helping, uh, 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 concrete can uh, regain mechanical property uh, and uh, also it has uh, higher durability and uh, also can get uh, lower maintenance expense because you don't need to uh, put a lot of money to uh, fix uh, to repair the damage the uh, concrete because it is a self healing effect. So, can we combine two kinds of effect to avoid the concrete uh, cracking and to uh, repair concrete cracking? So, this is a study of UHPC. Uh, prop, uh, self healing properties. As we can see, uh, in during these years, this research in this field is uh, it is uh, um, it is experiencing very huge uh, development. Especially, we can see during uh, 2017 and 2022, and is highest in this field. Uh, and we also found people. Uh, to investigate the UHPC property in different environments, in different uh, scenarios like uh, water dry cycle, salt spring, fresh water, uh, because you uh, researchers want to find the uh, self healing property of UHPC in different scenarios. But the field can search this property could be changed in a very harsh environment and also can cannot consider the load effect. As we know, in the real structure, uh, the UHPC structure will solve uh, the load from upper structure or it is weight, or uh, even can injure some harsh environment. So we should investigate this relationship uh, between uh, and um, the relationship between the load effect and the environment effect. This is why we did this uh, experiment so next, I will introduce my experiment plan. Firstly, we did our UHP specimen with this uh, components. As we can see, we use very uh, huge, uh, huge volume of cement, and we also use some crystallized matrix. Uh, it is uh, like uh, self-healing promoter to help 
UHP system healing, and we did our specimen like this geometry, and because we want to create a crack in the middle of our specimen, so we firstly we should do the pre crack test, and after this uh, uh, loading, we get two. We set two kinds of crack width, zero point one millimeter and zero point three millimeter, and this two LVT uh, are well attached on the surface of the specimen, and we record this crack opening displacement. After its target, it achieve our target um, crack opening displacement. We will uh, make our insert machine uh, goes up with the same speed of the going down. And we create uh, two kinds of crack width. Okay. And after specimen uh, with a pre crack test, uh, we transfer our specimen into this setup we design. In this setup, we can give a, a, a force, a sustained load to our specimen. Firstly, you can see uh, we, we put our specimen in this setup. And we will give a force in this setup. This force is equal to the force of uh, this specimen pre crack test uh, recording. And we give the same uh, sorry. We give the same force. And the technician will tie to this mass and we do it, and you will see this force from the instrument machine was decreasing because force uh, was given to this uh, setup. So after this uh, force from the instrument machine is equal to zero. We can see that all uh, loads uh, uh, are given to this force setup. So after these procedures, we put our specimen in three kinds of water. The type of water is as a reference. Uh, this water is from Milano City water supply, and the salt water with 3.3 is concentration um, percent. And we use Gelsum water. Gelsum water it was collected by Toscana. It is from our of my project named Resilience. Because in this project, we want to investigate self uh, UHPC durability in very harsh uh, environment. So we collect this water. As we can see in this tab, after analysis of the components in of the Gelsum water, we found that it contains a lot of crude uh, ice and soft ice, so it should be regarded as uh, aggressive ice, aggressive water. So this is a whole experience plan. We have two kinds of, um, uh, we said two kinds of uh, crack width, 0.1 millimeter and 0.2 millimeter, and we will also use the references specimen and in the different words I uh, described, and we we in order to check it is mechanic property and the uh, mechanic property uh, change. So we observe in different uh, observation uh, observation time, one month, three months, six months, and twelve months. And how to check the mechanic property evolution? Firstly, we we did a UPV test, ultrasonic first velocity test. And uh, you can see in this setup, in this app, there is a wave. Uh, this emitter from here, the wave we are through this whole specimen, and this this a uh, reserve we are reserve this wave, and we will record this uh, time through this specimen, because we already know this uh, span of the specimen. The span was divided by this uh, uh, time of of. Uh, uh, wave and we know the speed and uh, so we test we use this test to check the uh, specimen in different stages intact uh, correct and held so we come up with this index velocity recovery and this part is intact uh, value and this part is velocity of different stage and we also wanted to to see how uh, critical waste changes. So we use max curvy to record this uh, critical waste because the length from the max curvy is very limited. So we just uh, 
capture one part of this crack, but we can uh, uh, continuously shooting this, and we just put one part and and put all uh, pictures from one crack into uh, Photoshop to, uh, to rebuild the entire crack, and we use this uh, magic uh, wand in Photoshop to to uh, to obtain the all pixel. The stack area is this uh, crack, and we use previously we used a scale, a real ruler to as a combination calibration, and so we know this uh, stack area real size. And we measure this length, so we get the real, the whole uh, area was divided by the length. So we know the correct width. So we measure the initial correct width, and and after selling correct width, and we use this index to evaluate the correct width change. And another thing is splitting the test. After healing, we did a splitting test to check how the stiffness uh, development and this as k c f f uh, let's say this k c zero is the pre crack loading slope and k u zero is unloading slope in pre crack test and for this one is uh, final fuel uh, uh, final spin test the loading uh, stage yeah. okay and we come up with the index stiffness recovery to evaluate the, how the stiffness changes. So this is the result, as we can see, but from this picture, as we can see, with the increase of time, the, um, all uh, cracks uh, are closure gradually, and uh, we calculate, firstly, we divided our crack width into two uh, groups. One is less than 0 0.1 and the one is another one is frequency uh, is between 0 0.1 millimeter and 0 0.3 millimeter and uh, we can see for narrow crack group and with increase of thumb and there's as I think as is increasing especially for specimen in tap water just after six months uh, it can achieve 100% as, as it means the crack was totally Healed and sealed. But for specimen in the salt water, it needs six months to achieve 100% SES. And for specimen in just water, it also has longer uh, periods. Uh, it's like after 12 months, it's very hard to achieve 100% SES. Uh, similarly, we found there for wine crack after one month. Uh, especially in tap water can to 100%, but uh, in just some water is very slower still as it has than other uh, specimens. And uh, we did the UPV test. Similarly, this result is good uh, uh, agreement with the result from uh, uh, ICS. You can see uh, for narrow crack, which is higher as IVR for white specimen with white crack, which is lower. Uh, IVR in same uh, period period, and uh, but we want to check two kinds of ev uh, evaluation indicator correlation relationship, and in this thing we use uh, in this case we use Gaussian correlation coefficient, and you can see this is ICS, this is IVR, it can this correlation can achieve the point seven hundred forty seven, it's higher. How to check this mechanical property recovery? Firstly, uh, we we can see for specimen with narrow crack 0 0.1 millimeter crack open displacement, uh, we see for specimen in type water just one one month, it's going to 15 percent uh, ICR, and the salt water also can achieve like uh, 14, and just water like uh, 12. But uh, after it's uh, like three months, uh, three months for type water, uh, specimen in type water can achieve 20, like 27 percent, as I say, as as R, and salt water is lower, and just the lowest is uh, 16. But after one year, this uh, difference between three kinds of scenario 
are very narrow, and you can see. And for white crater, it's still very similar. After one month, basically, we cannot, but just a little bit, uh, I say, are increasing. And after, but after one year, it can achieve higher, uh, I say, R for three kinds of <coughs> environment. And uh, we get to the, so we also use Pearson correlation coefficient to measure this relationship between IVR and ISR. This um, correlation can show 0 0.1, uh, uh, 0.916. And for this, ICR and ICS, R is equal to 0 0.671, so it's very high. Why we can find this, why this uh, difference uh, between different uh, break ways? Because uh, Specimen with wide, wide crack width means specimen suffer huge damages and also self healing cannot build successfully as good as uh, specimen with narrow crack. <clears throat> so, we want to check how self healing changed the uh, chloride the penetration. So, firstly, we pick up all specimens in the salt water and uh, after splitting, find the skin test. <laughs> We picked it up and we did a silver natural dissolution spring test. And uh, after this, this test, you can see this uh, uh, chloride penetration uh, part so will show white uh, color, white color. And we measure this chloride depth with microscopy. And we you also uh, calculate this. Uh, chloride penetration speed, the chloride depth was divided by the occurring time. And as we can see, with the increase of time, this chloride speed is decreasing because of self healing, because we think it's maybe a self healing uh, effect. It will make uh, 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 this gray closure. So, because of self healing, the chloride penetration is uh, decreasing. And, oh, okay, as we see, discussed, specimen in different environments shows different self healing performance, especially specimen in aggressive environments like the uh, uh, water or salt water shows lower uh, than uh, specimen in type of water. So, we wanted to check uh, the self healing product, how it changes in deep, uh, with the Mexico, with the SEM and EDS. Let's see, uh, for First one is specimen in the uh, tap water. After uh, six months, we can see a lot of self healing product is touched on, uh, are touched on the surface of the fiber. And we, after we did this EPS test, we, according to our previous three study, we know it's calcium carbonate. And you can see it's very easy to, to see this cubic and cubic morphology. And after six months, we check this surface of fiber. You can see a lot of fragments um, on, on the fiber surface. It shows very good bonding between fiber and matrix. But we did the same things in, for specimen in salt, in salt water. After first picture, you can see this is EPS uh, map scanning. Uh, we can see the element distribution. In this uh, area, you can see this uh, green part is the chloride element, and uh, you can see this chloride uh, is well, this area is, is a bit quite huge because of chloride penetration of our specimen. And uh, we also found that the self healing product, I see, is not as pronounced as the specimen in uh, the tap, tap water, but uh, after the EBS test, we know the uh, element distribution. So we know it is custom carbonate. So it, even in salt water, the self healing product cannot change. Uh, it's still uh, custom carbonate. But after six months, we found a lot of uh, matrix on the fiber surface. It also, so it also shows very good uh, bonding properties in, uh, between fiber and matrix. So another, we did the same thing for specimen in geosome water. Uh, you see there's uh, Sulfate element is a distribution, and uh, but uh, after three months, uh, we found the fiber is very smooth. We cannot find too much self-healing product. 
But after uh, six months, we found some cubic thing stuff, and so we can protect it to see very clear to find it. And we did the EDS analysis. We think it uh, in his uh, custom cabinet. So because of so we can through this EDS and SEM test, we know. Uh, Aggressive ions will affect the morphology of the uh, self healing product and also can, can affect the, the rate of growth of, of calcium carbonate because of the inhibitory effect from aggressive ions like chloride ions and sulfate ions, especially for specimen in geothermal water because it has sulfate ions and chloride ions, like a double effect uh, to. to but with the increase of the time, this inhibitor effect will be overcome. Because you see, after six months, we found the septic product. So this is the whole conclusions. So with the increase of the time, we can see uh, the septic property uh, is very obviously, and especially when specimen in the tap water shows very good self-healing performance. And but in and we check the uh, uh, index difference recovery. We found that after one year, all specimen can achieve twenty to fourteen percent recovery in stiffness. And why? Um, we did the silver natural test. We found uh, self healing effect in HPC. We are stop. We are stop this penetration of uh, chloride. And another thing is uh, self healing product is mainly calcium carbonate, carbonation, a carbonate, but uh, we cannot find other things. And or, or in all, uh, we cannot find the, even in the UHPC in substandard load and exposed, exposed to in very harsh environments, we cannot find any degradation <laughs> property happening. So UHPC still can keep very good. Uh, Performance very good uh, durability because of heading. So thanks for your attention. That's all.